Hi, my name is Hendrik and I'm the founder of WMExperts.online, a platform for web-based SAP EWM consulting. This video here is part of our series called Understand SAP EWM, where we are trying to explain and describe the core features, uh, the, the core concepts and ideas behind the core features and functionalities. That means you will not be showing you with all those details that you can get on <coughs> SAP Help or in all those books which are available, but rather concentrate on making you understand the main concept and ideas. This video right here is about the layout-oriented storage control, functionality, concept, as mentioned before. And we would really appreciate in case you leave us a comment, either right here, just below the video, or on our website. And just let us know whether you like the video, whether did, you did not like the video, whether you have any ideas how we could improve. And yes, I know this is not <coughs> state-of-the-art audio equipment, but I really don't know whether anybody will be watching <laughs> these videos. So um, I promise I will invest um, a bit of uh, money in case um, I will find some followers here. But um, yeah, rather just let us know what you think and um, how we could improve or give us some topics that you would like to see in one of our next videos. One last point from my side. There's a disclaimer on wmexperts.online slash disclaimer. And uh, this is also valid for all the contents that we publish with uh, these kind of videos. That's it from my side. I will hand over to our lovely assistant Inga and get back to you after the core part of the video. And um, you can just um, relax, lean back and soak up some EWM knowledge. Have fun. For the beginning, let us stay away from the system and try to understand what layout-oriented storage control would look like in real life. Imagine you go for a city trip in order to see a famous site. You arrive by train and need to find a way from the train station to the site. The site is about 10 kilometers away from the train station, and in addition to this, there is a river crossing the city, so there is no option to reach the site on foot. There might be a bridge across the river, but you are not sure. So the first thing you can do is go to the closest taxi station and tell the driver that you want to see this famous site. We have the first movement here, train station to taxi station using your feet as the mode of transport. The taxi driver is happy to give you a ride, but unfortunately tells you that there is no bridge at all, so the only thing he can do is drop you off at the landing pier of the ferry. You agree as you have no other option. It is too far for walking. So we see the second movement here. Taxi station to landing pier using the taxi as a mode of transport. Having arrived at the landing pier, the last step is easy. You take the ferry and arrive at your final destination. The last movement from landing pier to the site uses the ferry as a mode of transport. To sum up, we could not go directly from the train station to the site, so we had to split our path into different subpaths. When we started the first subpath, we did not know how exactly we would reach the destination, but people on the way, e.g. the taxi driver, helped us. So what would that look like in a warehouse now? Again, we make it short and easy. We receive a pallet and we want to store it on a bin in our automated storage and retrieval system. Our ASRS is nothing but a pallet rack, which is operated by a couple of automated storage and retrieval robots. So no option to put away with the forklift, which is the only resource we have in the receiving area. We create our initial warehouse task from the receiving area to the destination bin in the pallet rack, but based on the LOSC customizing, the system knows that this warehouse task cannot be confirmed in one step. Thus, it is created in waiting status, and a separate warehouse task is created to send the pallet to the handover place of the conveyor. This warehouse task is using the forklift as a resource to process it. Having arrived at the conveyor, the system checks again whether a direct movement to the destination bin is possible or not. 
We need our storage robot for the putaway, so the next warehouse task is created to send the pallet by the conveyor to the ASRS handover. Here we have the option to communicate directly with the PLCs using the inbuilt MFS component of SAP EWM. Our second warehouse task uses the conveyor as a resource to process it. Once we reach the ASRS handover and the storage and retrieval robot picks up the pallet, the system checks the LOSC customizing again. This time there is no intermediate bin left, so we activate the first warehouse task, update its source bin and conduct the movement. Here we use the storage robot as the resource to process it. Just a quick look at a sample customizing. Again, this is a simplified view as we're not interested in all details and possible configuration options at this point. For our example flow, we would need at least two records. The first record would have the receiving area as the source storage type and the pallet rack as the destination. The intermediate bin for this record would be the conveyor handover. The second record would have the conveyor handover as the source storage type and again the pallet rack as the destination. The intermediate bin for this record would be the ASRS handover. Thank you, Inga. Um, I would like to close this video with uh, four additional points this time. First point, a very interesting note about how you can realize a flow rack based process in EWM using layout oriented storage control. The link is right below this video. Second point is your skills. So besides practical um, experience, try and error, it is very important from our perspective to have a good theoretical base. So I put you the links to our uh, most favorite readings one for functional, one for technical, and um, one for material flow and business um, related knowledge and topics. Third one is uh, our service, wmexperts.online. Uh, EWM consulting either remotely using tools like Jira or Slack or on site support, whatever fits your needs. And the last one is our channel. So feel free to subscribe. You will find the button somewhere here and we'll be notified about new videos. Thanks for now. Leave us a comment, give us a like, and uh, hope to see you next time.